What are we getting started with? What are we getting started with? Let's go. Ah, right, you ready to go? Uh -oh. oh, we got all the volume kicked up. <laughs> yes, we do. All right, I'm ready. You ready? Mm -hmm. Let's roll. Let's lock in. Let's go. All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to another 5K tennis discussion. Uh, it is a rainy Tuesday here in Alabama. Um, today is April the 5th, by the way. Um, I always feel like we're doing something wrong if it's raining because, you know, I can't stand still very long. So when it rains, Robert I'm said that he said, well, let me go back to his message because he, he's learned not to text you, not to include you in text because you don't like it. Well, it's not that I don't like it. Does, I'm a little old school. Does does, so and does, says, does anyone but me like to have their phone beeping all day if if you're not even in the conversation? I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a I just. I'd rather just chill and not have my phone. I said, I bet Justin's going to be stir crazy because the weather is just about to be on top of us now. <laughs> Let's go. He, <laughs> he knows me very well. What's up, Gene Swart? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, speaking of rainy days, uh, how's the weather in South Africa? I'm guessing it's probably not raining. Maybe not, though. I don't mind the rainy day today. Yeah, you know what's intriguing about South Africa? It's it's not that very far. It's not very far if you look at the map or, or the globe and flip it upside down. It's like the tip of Southern Africa, and then like Antarctica is is Antarctica somewhat close, even though it's probably pretty warm. I'm guessing there. It's kind of weird how that works, right? Look at the tip of Chile and Argentina. Isn't it pretty close to Antarctica as well? Yeah, I think it is. You're right. Why why do no commercial flights fly over Antarctica? By the way, Gene says it's been raining in. South Africa. Why, why do no commercial airline flights fly over Antarctica? I mean, think about it. If you were flying from like Northern Russia, I, I, that actually is going to be a topic, not flying, but Russia. Um, it, if you were flying from like Russia to Beijing, wouldn't it be like easier to kind of, or excuse me, that's the wrong direction. That would be the Northern hemisphere. So if you were flying from Chile to like Australia, wouldn't it be beneficial to fly over the Antarctica? But I, I think there's some top secret alien bases there. That they don't want anybody to see. He says it's raining here in Cape Town. Yeah. Pretty close to Antarctica. <clears throat> All righty. All right. Let's start today's show. It's a rainy day, so um, Carla and I are, are are not teaching, but we did, by the way, go to a very good event this morning, and that's how we're starting today's show with a shout-out. Actually, two shout-outs, but this is the main shout-out to uh, one of our students and a very, very, very fine young lady to say the least, uh, and her name is Anne Marie Bentley. Mm -hmm. uh, Anne Marie Bentley accepted a tennis scholarship. She signed today to play tennis at Birmingham Southern University in Birmingham, Alabama, which is a big deal. Fine school, fine area. Um, Carla, what are your thoughts on watching yet another 5K tennis student head off to college? I had to hold back my tears. Uh, I um, I put myself in her mom's shoes, knowing that it's her her oldest kid, right? Her oldest daughter. So she's experienced it for the first time. You know, I've been through this with my son, not that he was going to go play sports, but leaving off to college, it was a proud moment. It was, it brought, it was happy tears, you know, cause you know, you watch these kids grow up. Um, and I'm sure the parents, you know, from the beginning, they said she started playing tennis at eight. What I, what I liked about, what I liked about her speech was that she thanked everybody who helped her everyone who helped her. And I thought that's how it should be, you know, because it started with someone that taught her how to play the game, right? Someone definitely taught her how to play the game, started from that. And there are people in between that. I mean, the main ones being her parents, because her parents are the ones that helped her get those lessons, get that help. So she included everyone. And I thought that's really good. And that's how the tennis floor should be. You should all be a team. So it, w it was a proud moment. I, you know, I thought it was beautiful what they did. I've never experienced that because, you know, both of the boys are going to an academy, so they don't do that for academics. But I'm, I'm hoping one day I get to see that with Lily. We, you, John, Jonathan, our oldest son, is at the United States Air Force Academy, and when he got this um, type of opportunity, COVID. COVID hit. Ahead, so yeah. um, then in the very early stages of that, either way, uh, neither here nor there, this isn't about ours. This is about uh, this young lady. Um, speaking of her parents, by the way, a, a really, really, really amazing family. She has, Anne Marie has a younger sister, and Ella, I hope, I hope who, it who we teach as well. I hope it inspire Ella to continue playing tennis and work harder because I feel like Ella could do the same or better. Yeah. 
I mean, she could follow her sister's footsteps. I think that Ella can do even bigger things, you know, and I hope that pushes her to do that. I mean, that was a proud moment for those parents. And, and I'm sure for Anna Marie to get up there and hear her teacher talk about how many state championships she's won, how many years she started playing varsity since seventh grade, like Lily. And, you know, and it seems like she's a leader. Um, she was very humble, very beautiful girl, you know. Uh, it was it was great to be there. It was really great to be there. I'm glad that we made the trip. And I was honored to be asked to go because that's the first time we got asked to go. You know, I'm going to Gabe's April yes. 22nd. I'll be there for years, Gabe. Yeah. So it, yeah, we, I was filming it. By the way, we we recorded uh, the about a 10 minute video um, where her coach was introducing uh, or, or t uh, making a speech about uh, her and introducing her to come up and, and say her piece. And, and yes, it was, it was very nice. I, I can't lie. I, you know, I, I, I'm a pretty tough guy. At least I try to think I am. Uh, but I was filming it. And um, when, uh, when she was talking about coaches and mentioned another good coach from the area, Scott Novak, I've never met him, but, but I hear good things. Um, There's and, a guy, and, Mike O'Brien. He's on our Facebook. Yeah. We don't know him personally, but I've heard he's yeah. a great coach as well. Uh, and and then to hear us was very nice. It was a tearjerker involved. And I, and I love this setup because a lot of times Carla and I, um, over the years, we've coached and we moved from one place to the other. And you find that certain coaches kind of um, may not even know one another, but like, don't go there. You can't take from me, this type of thing. And and it's, it's, it's something that Carla and I always try to tell students. If, um, if it's budgetable and you can see other coaches do so, um, mm -hmm. do so it, 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 it's always good to get a different angle on things. Definitely. Um, and, and, and I think that's a big problem with a lot of the pockets and, and the United States, especially where good tennis has flourished for a long time. And now it's just not, um, and the world's a tough place. Yes. But in, and tennis, um, it's a very unique sport because, um, everyone is like-minded generally, right? And we're going to get into some kind of negative things, not really um, something that we'd like to do. Uh, but there, since this thing at the Oscars with uh, Will Smith and Chris Rock slapping, um, anyway, I, I don't want to get necessarily into it. But this thing has been transpiring on the tennis court as well. And so we, ha so we have some videos that uh, we're going to show you uh, about some of, of, of these type situations that are now arising on the tennis court. And I mean recently, like in the past couple of days. Um, anyway, but back, back to Anne Marie, beautiful girl, beautiful talent, wonderful family. And she'll be, you know, yeah. that she'll be very success, successful, S successful. Now I'm yeah. saying that like my son, she's, she'll be very successful. Um, because of the way she was brought up, Yeah. you know, uh, if you're, I think if you're brought up right and it seems like she stayed on that path, the right path. Yeah. I, and, and, and I did, I did, uh, I've never met the young man. I think maybe I've, I've passed by him once or twice, her but, but her boyfriend, yeah, her boyfriend was there. So I thought good, that good was supportive job. I thought from I was like, a wow. Good supportive I was like, job. okay, okay. I was like, well, this yeah. is, you know, a little good more supportive serious. Job, yeah, a little bit yeah. More, yeah. So, uh, uh, but with that said, not prying in anyone's personal life, we don't do that. We're, we're, we always critique the athlete and not necessarily the, the, the personal stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but good job for the young man to be there for um, his girl. Shows that he really cares. What's up, Lobo? Let's go, Darren. What's up, London? Hey, by the way, Darren, you know that coach you sent an email to a long, 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 long time ago? Yeah. <laughs> he is no longer at the club. <laughs> All right. Interesting stuff. What's up, LeBeau? Um, speaking of Darren LeBeau, um, if, and, I, and I'm not He's sure. got a beautiful daughter, too. I think his daughter. Yes. Isn't your daughter 18 years old? I think I saw her in a prom dress, or you were sitting next to her. Um, this nice, there was a nice car behind it, behind you guys. I think it was her prom. I and she had this beautiful dress on. He has a beautiful she was daughter. A, she's a beautiful girl. Yeah. Uh, Darren LeBeau on Instagram. Um, and he, you can put exactly the the use or your your page name in in comments. But Darren is quite a maestro, like Federesque, in terms of trick shots. So if you want to see some really killer trick shots mm -hmm. uh, from all over the place, from the house to outside, from the bedroom to the kitchen, then check out his Instagram page. It's quite amazing. Good job, Darren. Let's get down. Gene asked, do you think the timing of Medivh's hernia operation is very convenient? He just wants to skip play because he just hates it. Gene Swart and I are on the same brainwave. We, we have an entire segment for this, um, and, and that's going to come up in just a moment. So uh, Gene Swart, we are on the same brainwave today. Um, I'm not shocked. We generally are. All right. Um, I want to give one last shout out before we jump into the meat uh, of today's show. 
Uh, shout out to nine, nine, and that's not uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. That's siete, ocho, nueve. That's nueve. Nine 5K tennis students and Mirror Lake Racket Club students. That's where we teach. Um, and that's where our, our home, away from home is. And I think it's more like home because we're away from home more. Mm -hmm. So that's our home. So we had nine, nine total students playing yesterday at the same tournament and all uh, went undefeated. No one lost. So uh, why do I bring that up? It's junior high school tennis. Doesn't well, we, matter. Let's one did, go. One did lose because she was on the other team. Oh, yes. Okay. So it was eight and one, but the team that we assist coaching, which is Bryant High School, yeah. was playing someone from an, an opposing high school, Theodore. Um, uh, and, 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 and she lost. So it was a win because she was part of the and, family. And, and I, and unfortunately yeah. I had to tell the coach that we are moving. So yeah. I wanted her to hear it from me and not somebody else tell her. And she was cool with it. And she even gave me suggestions. She understood, but who was moving? Well, we were, moving. I know we're moving. Yeah. But... We're not going to play for Brian if we move. Oh, how does she take that? She, she, uh, I explained to her what happened. She said, that really sucks. And I said, you know, I can't move to Bayou of Atri in Irvington. I was like, because there's nothing there. And she uh, she understood. And she even gave me suggestions of schools that we should play. I didn't even think about she that. She said, play for Davidson. That's one. Oh, that happened yesterday? Yes, I did tell so, her. What Carlos I wanted her to hear it from me because I figured someone saw your Facebook post and would tell her. What Carla's alluding to is, is Carla and I have lived in, the, in this residence for seven years or so, mm -hmm. six or seven years. Mm -hmm. And we had a letter not from the landlord. We had a letter from an attorney in our mailbox that said the owner of your current residence doesn't want to extend the lease any longer. So we're right in the middle of a school year or towards the end of it. And, yeah. and our kids, and we've invested so many years into the tennis team, but now we have to move. So um, unexpectedly, it's no big deal. We're okay. But um, our, our children, our own children and our own students have been a, a foundation of that tennis team for quite a while. So it's amazing that an owner in Utah. Um, you mean uh, Ohio? Or yeah, Ohio. The guy lives in Ohio that owns the house. So with one flick of a pen, yeah, the a high school team is transformed, and a whole family of seven that have lived here forever is having to move away, and that's what she's referring to. We'll get into that in, in a moment. But shout out to all nine of those players for being on the court. Uh, all Mirror Lake students, five K students, uh, and all are played very well uh, with uh, all the Bryant kids going undefeated. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep helping them. We have them on Friday coming to our clinic. Let's go. It's I told them bring the team on us. We're gonna train them for two hours. So Friday. we're having we're having a big we're we're having a big shindig at Mirror Lake this Friday with the Bryant team and 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 go ahead and tell Theodore. I mean tell Theodore to roll out. Let's let's go Petway. Come on, let's let's, let's get out. We'll we'll put a shout out there at twelve forty seven from Petway. Okay, so we'll get her out too. All right. Remember, don't forget that we got to get uh, Keisha to bring her daughter. Okay, let's get down. That's how we get down. Mm -hmm. All right, do it for the children's always. Okay, another rainy day today. I had one quick question for all of you and for Carla, and I want to see it in comments. When it rains, what are some things that you do and maybe you look forward to do? So sometimes, you know, I wake up in the morning. I'm like, God, dog, my back, man, my knees. I can't even get out of bed. And I'm like, I wish it was raining. And, and, and if it did rain, what would be something that you would actually still push yourself to get out of bed and do? Clean. But you do that any day. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, like lately we work so hard. So for me, a rainy day is a bless, blessing. <laughs> Sorry. You don't take it that way. I, for me, when it's raining, I would personally like to sit down on the couch, watch some movies, play on my phone. I'm sorry. Factual. I don't play. I, you know, I just want to, I just want to chill out. Not this man. He will not let me chill out. So maybe I'll chill out when I die. <laughs> well, then you'll just be chilling with me eternally somewhere else. <laughs> We're still going to be glad. Just saying. We're still going to be Like, glad. I want to chill. Like, I do a lot of talking and I'm standing on a broken toe. So, a rainy day for me is a blessing. Blessing. Yeah, it really is. So, so, um, so, oh, man. Darren LeBeau shadow swinging indoors. Joanna saw what's up. I love her. Uh, spring cleaning, but with a laugh. I guess she's laughing at you. Skiing in the snow from Jean Swart. Can you ski in South Africa? I would love to like watch movies, like movies that I know I've seen before, but I want to see again. Yeah. So, you like, know. Joanna's reading books. Uh, uh, Darren, uh, figure, figuratively, I, I, I pretty working much, out. I'm not shocked, but if I had a Jose so P, I would be working getting out. his grind on. I would be working out. Let's go, Jose P. Yeah. 
Yeah. What, what do I like to do? Honestly, uh, there's a couple things I like to do when it's raining. And, and you know how sometimes I spend a long time in the shower. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually am thinking of drills in my head. Mm-hmm. So we came up, we, we come up with drills a lot. And sometimes uh, it's like a band when they play concert tour songs, you know, mm-hmm. and they find, they, they find a song that really resonates and demands it once again. Mm-hmm. And they find uh, that on some songs, they don't ever play it anymore because they weren't really into it. Mm-hmm. So um, <clears throat> when, when we come up with drills, we come up recently with battleship. We've come up with 1531 and uh, some drill stick and some don't. Oh, uh, I got some drills that remember the drill, the Mike Tyson drill. But oh, I, that's a but live feeding. Remember, combine it with the other one, live feeding. And non-stop. They, I forgot and they have, about the Tyson. And they drill. have to be consistent. So, in other words, if they miss, you know how you have to get to twenty though. Yes. But live feeding, you have to make it in. So one, then one, two, one, two, three. But you got to make the yes. ball in. So Blakely, that's coming up for you, by the way. Okay, by the way, that is coming up for you because I did it to somebody and I said, "How did I forget about this?" Exactly. I can't. Bl- I forgot about what it. What she said today. I've cleaned and done laundry, but I prefer to watch my murder shows and be lazy. That's cool. Murder show. I, I agree. I like to watch some movies that, you know, I, I just want to relax because I know tomorrow is a boom, grinding day. In your face. The Mike Tyson, the Mike Tyson uh, workout is, um, goes as this. So you have the student in front of you and uh, you can hand feed it or you can live feed it, but you make sure you have a couple baskets of balls. And it starts with one ball. So the students in front of you, but and you have you have at the baseline, and and you start with one ball. So you toss the ball way out to their forehand and make them move laterally, defensively to the ball, hit it back, and come back and split step in the middle, right? Then you go to two balls. So you throw one ball out here, they come back, split step, and then one ball over there, and they come back and split step. Okay, but it adds up um, from three balls and then to four balls and then to five balls and then to six balls. And eventually you get to 17 balls where when they come back and split step, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And they come back and split step. And then you're like, hey, you better be ready because it's going to 17 now. Mm -hmm. And it ends up being something like 210 balls without stopping, stretching the corners of the court. It gets to be freaking beastly. For sure. Um, anyway, uh, I think that was it with um, the rainy day stuff. But for me, I like to write drills, love to write drills, and I like to play with my dogs. We, we have two dogs, um, and, and, and I love those guys. Um, anyway, all right. So uh, Carla and I uh, came across a couple videos today um, of um, something very similar to when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock um, during the Oscars, okay? Hey, what's up, Gabe? Let's go, Perkins. Let's go. When is your signing? April 22nd? Gabriel Perkins in comments is another, um, uh, and, and I was going to say 5K tennis student. He's way more than that. He's like someone that we have um, watched him grow from very young, and he's been a player and a, and a part of our family the entire time. Your mother is like your best friend mm-hmm. outside of um, uh, in New York, uh, Priscilla. Oh, his mother, uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, like this. So, uh, Gabe, fine young man, and he's actually playing tennis um, in the fall for Mobile College, where my mother graduated from college back in, uh, I forget the years, but I think like 66 or something. Mm-hmm. Anyway, good to see you, Gabe. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but Carla has a couple videos of some altercations. I mean, slapping and getting into fights on the tennis court within the past couple of days. Uh, so Carla, if you can grab those and, and show them. And again, this is, we, we don't like to dwell in the negative. We, we try to stay positive, but we have wars going on in Europe uh, or Eastern Europe. Uh, we have, um, Oscars, not that I give a bleep bleep about that in the first place, but in other words, these days you can't turn on the TV without watching someone hitting somebody, some war going down or whatever. So Carla's going to show you a post-match handshake. After a match, do you want me to get up and show it? I got longer just, reach. Just play. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys this, and this happened after a match just the other day. Did you did you see that? Let me show. Let me show it to you again. Okay. Yeah, and then what happens after, it to me was crazy. What happens after that? Um, it, yeah, it ended up getting into a brawl. It, it, oh, I dropped my phone. It ended up getting worse. Do, do they have coverage of it? 
I mean, hip hip play. Here we go. See, I got a good I got a good ring span. There you go. Yeah, let me see this. Okay, so this was after it. It was the dad of the opponent who got slapped. The dad was going after him, and the kid's running. The kid's running. The kid that slapped the other kid's mm. running because daddy was coming after him. Um, yeah, it's and you know, and then going back to that, I told you I'm, I'm not gonna say much about the article. Read something. There was a host on MSNBC. Um, I put here. I wrote it down. Her name is Tiffany Cross. And she said, you know, I don't know what the big deal is about Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. It's a mm thing that other people. A, ch- a culture thing. It's a culture thing that other races would not understand. I thought. Now, that, okay. So what. what I was like, okay. Really? So let, let, let me put this in, in, <laughs> pers- in, in perspective. What, what we have, we have uh, many friends of all walks, shapes, sizes, and so forth. Um, a couple of our really close friends, like really, really good friends are African-American. Uh, respectively, what's up, B Dog? Uh, what's up, Brian? My, uh, what's my it, coach? What's up, DL? Playing, what's my, up, Mike? My coach, when I was playing challenges, they were from uh, Trinidad, and and yeah. and I mean, come on. So the moral of the story is, though, forget about that. Um, by multiple um, individuals, we were we were basically said, "Man, come on, you got to laugh this off." That's just people with cell phones in their hands recording things that, you know, they're, they're just looking to get views or whatever. And indicated that, look, you you speaking to us, uh, and I don't mean to say it us and them, but, Ghana, but, but, Ghana. but, but yeah, for for you, you don't, it's it's different. In other words, the way we, we react sometimes um, is, is, is just different and you just wouldn't understand. So, if, if, and, and, you know, you take it with a grain of salt. Yes, in some instances, but when you hear them, when you hear them explain to you, it's like, we just get down differently with stuff like that. Um, it's, it's, it's very, very, um, I guess, more comforting to hear that. It's not great to see, but do you agree or disagree that, it, it, that sometimes uh, we react differently to different things based upon culture. I don't care where you are in the world. Forget about tennis. Does someone in Russia or uh, Antarctica react differently to you? If you give them a thumbs up, I think a thumbs up sometimes is, 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 you know, like a really offensive gesture in certain walks of life. But am I making too many, am I really trying to be so positive in which I'm not? Well, B. Harris says it's not a Western African American culture to slap each other. He's maybe common in African countries. Yes, it's common. But, but yeah, B. Dog says the, it but himself. She, she was saying um, that Will Smith and uh, they understood each other. You know, it, it's a, I'm going to say, it. she said it's a black thing and that white people don't understand. To me, her comment right there, shows a division shows racism because she didn't have to say that i still read it with a grain of salt and, and, well, and, if i keep reading it to you and it's, so it's, to me it's like okay we should have just like the show like stopped right there like just hit a blank that that comment was so unnecessary oh. i mean come on now so me cursing at you know I could say that's a Spanish thing. Well, okay, I, I think I think look, I, I I don't know really how I want this to come out because I'm just thinking about it. Um, but look, for instance, B Dog, um, African American, love him like I I I really would give him my bed. Uh, Mike Mixon, um, one one of my best friends ever. Well, and, he, and, I think, but hold on, look, look Tazani, I think he's uh, I I know I've spoken to him. He says we don't have that culture. Harris. So Sanzani Tahuma. Yeah. Um, I don't think so. I don't think that's a culture thing. I mean, there are, yes, there are things like, you know, we see in the, you know, the tribes that they beat each other to, you know, present man. Yes. So can like I that. bring that up? Let me, yes. Okay. So my father, who is a retired physician doctor, he's 84 years old and he did a residency in Nigeria um, and spent four or five years there. Um, well, he'd come home for a little while and go back to Nigeria and he, he befriended a certain tribe of people in, in Nigeria and would send us pictures. And a lot of the pictures would be of young men, young boys, um, sitting down on a chair with glasses on and a mirror and looking at themselves, you know, and making sure they looked presentable. And in the background would be someone beating him with a cane and beating, just beating him down. And it was just, a, it was terrible to see. But for this tribe, a uh, pass, passage into manhood was to make sure that no matter how much pain you were going through, that you still are shining, right? You yeah. still look good. And he would he would show us pictures and say, hey, if you guys think your world is tough here with your damn cell phones and, and your McDonald's on the corner and, and, and all these obese 
people running around. Look at this young man. If this young man even cries, then more than likely he's going to be basically just absolutely tortured, right? Mm -hmm. and, and 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 this is this is what I think that we're getting at is that different walks of life, different places sometimes react differently to certain things. Now, um, I can tell you what, if me and B dog were sitting here right now, right. I'd be like, what's up, man. Get back, man. What's up? Give me that. We'd be talking shit. Right. However, if how about I, if he slapped you, how would you feel? I, I, he get, he, he, he get, okay. What about he okay. slapped you? I, look, I, I, I slap him back. He get on, he be beat me up. You pull him off. And then we have a beer a little while long. No, no, no. We no, have no. a beer a little bit. Don't later. tell me because someone, no, come on. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying it's received differently. Yeah. You wouldn't go, you wouldn't go to country club and be like, what's up, Bob? What's hey, up? Hey, Blakely, how would you feel if I slapped you? How would you feel for hitting a stupid shot? No, that guy lost the match and was upset. And there was probably some beef before that. <laughs> okay, so she hit a match and I got really upset and I slapped her. I think I would cry because break Blakely's really cool. I'm just saying, like, yes, that's what my point is. Hit check it. Punching is an assault. Slapping, touching, laying a hand on anyone is not acceptable. So did you have, did you have any more, did you have another slap or two in there or any other? I would slap you back. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. That's my point. Exactly. And then, <laughs> and then you might, you might spend a day or two without exchanging words, but ultimately you'd be right. You know what I mean? So I, I just would never do that. I would never lay a hand on someone unless they're hurting me. I don't think it's that big a deal though. I think it's just something so the to get So the kid slapping the other kid? No, I'm just, uh, it's not, it's, it's someone slapping somebody these days with countries invading other countries is slapping someone that big of a deal. I'm not saying I'm not condoning it. I'm not saying go slap somebody. If that was one of my kids doing it, then, oh man, it'd be a bad day for them. But with all this shit going on in the world, are you telling me it's that big of a deal that someone just smacks somebody? I mean, I got your article, Gene. Yeah. Brent Joba has no plans to ban Daniel Mendeve for this year's tournament. But I don't, you know, if he has a hernia, he's probably not going to play. But do you think that hernia is just a cover, just a cover mm -hmm. to not have to denounce where he's coming from? Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? It's it's a perfect. Now, a hernia requires surgery. So I'm guessing he, I had a hernia when I was a kid and I had to have, I still have a scar from it. I was very young, but uh, I had to be surgically fixed. So uh, I guess we'll find out. I like B. Harris comments. Slap and spit gets you dead, but a fight and punches is different. Yeah, man. Yeah, I agree. I mean, look, I'm from New York, and if somebody ever slapped me or whatever spit on me, it's on. Yeah. It's on. When, 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 oh, the, man. When the slap happened at the Oscars, everyone that um, is in the, um, I guess, digital world is looking to film anything with somebody slapping. So let's go slapping because we won't go to jail. The slap every, you know. Carla, why, why don't we do this? Why don't we, why don't we walk, why don't I walk over there and then walk in here and then just, no, I'm not, and just that. slap me and then we'll video it and say there was some fight and no, there'll be I'm a not, million views. I'm not doing that. That's, no. So no, stupid. No, no, no. Okay. Isn't, is jo Joanna Sasa, isn't it a boy thing? They like to try themselves. They should concentrate on sport competition. To let the seraph off an acceptable fashion, sports should do that instead of a war play of a match. It's a good point. And and stream, a stream. I was like, what is that? Yeah, and Joanna, stream. one of one of the one of the foundations of tennis is is a duel. In other words, you know, you get into a duel or or a sword fight, and you, one person comes out alive. I think tennis is supposed to emulate that, right? Well, I know the boy got upset because he lost. He lost to a fifteen year old. I totally get it. And this guy was like ranked one thousand five hundred or one thousand eight hundred something. So I get it. You know, I've seen girls really get bitchy, get upset, you know, that another girl beats them and they slap each other's hands or whatever. You I see, see it every day. I on see the it WHO every day. Or, but to the day. point where you go slap somebody, I mean, come on, you could have just not shook the guy's hand and that's it or said, screw you or whatever. Yeah. You know, it would have been better. Look, they're, 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 a slap is kind of sissy to me. That's kind of sissy. Uh, look, it, that's kind of, it, it, it's that's all kind of, ugly. That, that's kind of sissy. Like, just, you know. That's... So what would you do? Nothing? No, I mean, that, like, why would you even do that? It's not even manly, you know? Okay, so say, let's say I was, let's say you and I were sitting at the Oscars and dude talks about you look like Rambo. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we would both laugh at it. We would be like, uh, be, wow, okay. we, we'd be like, all right, that would be a compliment, right? Yeah, yeah. I, so anyway, I think people receive things differently. Um, I, I really think that uh, that night at the Oscars, you know, if a guy slaps, some, a, if a, guy slaps a woman, it's it's abuse. Yeah. Right. Don't forget that. If a guy slaps a woman, it's abuse. That's physical abuse. I agree. Now, if your mama slaps you, 
<laughs> that's different. Yeah. Is there a, is there a difference? If your mama slaps yeah. you because you were being stupid. I had my mom slap me across the face. It's not the best feeling, but she means business. She's telling you to stop. Yeah. You know? And, and also that's different cross culture. Yeah. If, if you, if you run in, if you run into uh, some of the places in the country that we've coached with their extravagant, you know, homes and stuff, mm -hmm. I think that if, if your kid got slapped, it'd be like, Oh my gosh, call the cops. But there are some places, um, uh, uh, you know, that where, you know, you kind of, you, you see someone that got popped and has a little, it's not, it's just okay. Right. Yeah. I, I, think I got slapped by a boy because I wouldn't go out with him. I was in uh, middle school, junior high school. And he slapped me after I said, no, I told my dad. And my dad came to the school and made him look like a little bitch. Really? Oh, he embarrassed him. He said, how dare? Like he was going to rip him apart. Your dad did? My dad came to school next day. He slapped me right in the face. It's uh -oh. the worst feeling. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Like and that is disrespectful. I don't care if the slap comes from a man or woman. It's, it's somebody that's not your blood besides your parents. That's it's not a good feeling. I'm sure Chris Rock felt like a little bitch. What? what no, 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 no. I don't think so. I don't. I, I don't think, think so. so. I think so. I think if I would have received a slap from Will Smith, it would be on. They would have to turn off the camera. Yeah, I, I see. I, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I, I, for for Chris Rock, I'm thinking that dude just made himself look stupid. No, he was laughing. He was like, ho, 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 ho. Looks over at his wife, and all of a sudden he has an issue with it. Look, if if I would have been, if, if I, no, Chris no, Rock, no, no, Chris no. Rock did the right thing. He just took it and yeah, and I don't think whatever. I would have reacted that way. Yeah. I, I wouldn't Will have Smith reacted. Looking that, like that, an that's idiot. just that's just like an maybe idiot. the bad like in me, you know, from yeah. being in New York. I don't think I could. All right, have so myself. we're still going to hang on to this topic, but we're going to shift it, kind of morph it into like a band playing one song, they jam for a bit, and then just go right into another one. We're kind of doing that here. So uh, Gene Swartz. He what said, I've been slapped by another mom for no reason, and my parents sued her. Who See, said that? They went in Who so far as suing Who her. Said that? Gene Swartz. Really, Gene? Yeah. You guys get down over there. Okay, let me, <laughs> let me get this. We, we'll take like comment, but let me shift the narrative here. The narrative is the same, but uh, Gene uh, Swartz uh, and someone else in comments kind of had this churning for a little bit. So um, there's multiple articles that we read and, and quoted as we move forward. Uh, but the, the kind of the gist of those article titles were this world number two, Daniel Medvedev and others, E-T-A-L and others for those Latin uh, individuals, uh, world number two, Daniel Medvedev and others, including the likes of Irina Savalenka, Belarusian, uh, Victoria Azarenka, Belarusian, and many others. There is a possibility that they, them will be banned from playing Wimbledon altogether. Um, let me, let me take this a little bit further. Um, some places, some tournaments are indicating that as long as when we show your name on the TV screen, if you have a independent flag, then we're good. Some places don't want to risk any one of those players from that are indigenous to one of those two companies. Don't want to risk them at all lifting a trophy because they say, quote, lifting a trophy would boost Vladimir Putin's regime. Okay, unquote. Now, how in the hell is lifting up a damn trophy gonna gonna boost up someone's regime? I get it; it makes them look successful. I get all that, but can I please reiterate for the 17 millionth time about this, and not just from this uh, past month because there's been a war in Europe, Carla? How many times have people called you out right here on this show live? about you saying you're from the United States when you definitely don't look it, your skin's dark. How do you know I don't look it? How, how is someone from the United States supposed to look? Car okay, look? okay, so we'll talk about this. Carla, how many times do we roll up in the grocery store and they're like, I don't mean to touch you, but your skin. What kind of tannin cream do you use, girl? <laughs> I get it too many what kind times. of tan cream? I get it. So Where are you from? And and, and she, I get it too many And she times. says, and she says, well, I, I don't. This is just my skin color. And, and they're like, well, where are you from then? So it's not a tan cream. When people meet Carla, it's like, what kind of tan cream, cream you got? And then when she says none, where are you from, right? And then once you get past that, it's like, okay, well, you have to be from like Costa Rica or something. But she's from New York. They're trying to find out where I'm from. Um, yeah. SD said, I don't think Justin would turn the cheek after being slapped by a man. No, no, no. Hell no. Exactly. Hell no. Exactly. I, I've been through this before. It doesn't, yeah, it didn't, it didn't work out well for me. I, I did retaliate and it was really ugly. And, and then I had to pay a significant price for that. But yes, I would have definitely, definitely, definitely that the Oscars would have been jacked up. That's no what doubt. I said. Man, that whole place would, I mean, I would have gotten his damn thing. I would have gotten the microphone. I've been like, what? 
and, and, and I would have, I would, I would have told him, you better, you should have knocked me out. You shouldn't have slapped me. You, you should have punched me, but you slapped me. I'm still on my feet. I, I don't care. I'd grab an object. Bow, bow, boom, tackle, boom. I don't care if I was getting pounded. I'd be trying to just freaking pound on that. <laughs> Hell no. It would have been, look. They, oh, man. I told, that's what I said. Come on, man. Come on, guys. Yeah, I've been in that situation. Come on, similar. Guys. Hitchhiker said USA has fought more wars. I agree. So USA players should not lift trophies by the logic. Yeah, that's what I, when Justin told me that, I was like, how is it their fault that they're Russian? How is that's not their fault. Can I give Jose P the comment of the day, please? That's hitchhiker. Or hitchhiker. Sorry. Shame I, on you. I, man, I, Shame I got, on I you. I got contacts. I got contacts. I can't see. It's all blurry. Okay. Comment of the day for hitchhiker. Um, and, and look, I, I, we, we carry family. It has nothing to do with that. I, it, 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 I'm not knocking on uh, military or wars or anything. All I'm trying to say is there's always two sides to every story. And it's the one that holds the the wad of cash that generally dictates to the others. But yes, how are you? Uh, okay, let's let's since it's Wimbledon we're talking about, and not the U.S. Open. Let's shift our focus to Great Britain. Mm -hmm. How in the hell can you tell uh, Daniil Medvedev he can't play because of where you're from? Mm -hmm. But uh, isn't the HMS Queen Elizabeth like sitting offshore of like someone's country right now with F-35s like hovering? Mm -hmm. I'm like, it, this is outlandish. It's it's, it's stupid. Furthermore, why wouldn't why did why does one just assume why does one just assume that Daniel Medvedev, if he lifted up the trophy, would be like go Russia? And he doesn't even live there. He doesn't even train there. Maybe he would use that as a platform for the greater good, um, you know. And I don't want to get into geopolitics, but gee whiz, man, how is Irina Sabalenka or Victoria the Screaming Pretty Stuff Pig Ear Drummer gonna gonna change the fate well, of it's the raining hard? Change the fate of the war. Okay, when it rains like this, if the internet cuts out. Michael, Michael Walker said, you're supposed to look like an Indian. USA, the Indian, were here first. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. How do how are the people from the United States or how are Americans supposed to look? Yeah. It's a multi, it's a melting pot. How are we supposed to look? There is no look. There is no look. So it's stupid to ask someone. You know what I mean? Especially now, because there have been generations and generations of people have had kids, kids have states, that you know, and so on, whatever. Um, Gene Swartz says a bunch of old people are running Wimbledon. I'm telling you guys in the support of Putin's regimen. I refuse. So Michael Walker is watching Wimbledon. I mean, I don't think it's, they really need to get rid of that rule. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to watch Wimbledon too. So am I, but I think they need to get rid of that. There's whole no doubt rule. about that. I mean, that's crazy. I, it's not their fault. You know, I mean, we don't need to blame, uh, because of what one idiot is doing, you know, for the rest of the country or the people from there. It's stupid. I have Russian friends, many in New York. Uh, when I play tennis, uh, there were a lot of Russians in New York. They were migrating there. I remember in the 90s, early 90s, they were coming from Russia. Great players, great coaches. I had a Russian coach that I didn't even understand what he was saying because he barely spoke English, but I understood what he was showing me, you know, like, you know. Yeah. It's crazy to me. Like we always say, it doesn't, it, you know, the, the beautiful part about the sport of tennis is it's an international language. We've said that since day one here, since mm -hmm. we started uh, hanging out with all you guys. And the, the thing about tennis is there are no borders. There's no room for it. There's, you know, it's, it's people that have the same mindset for the most part. Um, they have the same outlook. They have the same um, hobbies. In other words, when they're not working, if you're, if you're a tennis player or a fan, you're going to be watching it or playing it right mm -hmm. uh it's it's where it's where it's a sport in which you can go and um be positive and there's a couple you know extraneous variables there outside the bell-shaped curve but for the most part tennis is supposed to be and should always be a place where uh, people can become one if if you go uh to any continent in the world outside of antarctica and i think they should put a bubble there but um, you have tennis players, right? You have like-minded tennis players um, that generally at the end of a battle will shake hands at the net. Now, speaking, uh, and we'll squash this topic with this. Um, how do you sit at a peace table with somebody and uh, talk about negotiations if there was just bodies laying in the street, um, uh, innocent people? How, how do you shake hands at the net? So why, why did I say this at the end of the segment? Well, if the gentleman slapped the guy at the net um, and Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, isn't that kind of synonymous with 
what we're seeing and in, in, in warfare. I mean, isn't that isn't that in essence what we're doing? And 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 we have to we have to figure out a way to shake hands at the net. So there should be a way where Chris Walk and Will Smith should be able to finally say we, sure we squash right. this. We should find a way I'm to sure figure out right. how to get this um this this one gentleman um um Putin and 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 the Western countries to figure out how to how they can shake hands at the net. Um, and that goes for anything in life. And and it, and it's sad to watch. And in the meantime, until we can learn how to shake hands at the net, all we're going to get is people slapping people and taking videos of it. Or what sells even more is plastering bombs being dropped on people's houses, shelters, schools, and mass graves on the news. Mm -hmm. It sells tickets. I being don't even like being nice at the net doesn't sell tickets. But blowing up houses and infrastructure does. How can we stop that? Stop, yeah. stop watching the negative and focus on the positive. Right, right. Unfortunately, you might get bored. That's the way it rolls. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pretty good. Yep. Uh, Hitchhiker says, Alcaraz versus Djokovic. What do you think, Djokovic? When? No, I'm just saying. They were to play. Oh, and Djokovic could take three years off and come back and play with a beer belly and, and would still beat Alcaraz at this point. By, just by sheer mental, by by intimidation, you have to think Alcaraz is, is new. He's new. You know, I he's think new. Djokovic has a lot of experience. And, yeah. Uh, he's been there. He's been down and stuff. Yeah. yeah. There's no doubt. There's there's no doubt. All right. Um, sliding into this topic, and this topic is an important topic, and that topic is this. The importance of hard work. Mm -hmm. Okay. The importance of hard work. How how important is hard work? No matter if it's on the tennis court, no matter if it's walking down the street, no matter if it's waking up in the morning, no matter if it's taking care of your kids. I don't care what it is. Diet doesn't matter. The importance of hard work. Um, not to deviate from tennis, I'll jump right back into there. But into tennis as as a, a, a kind of a paradigm shift in this narrative. The importance of um, hard work. Carla and I were listening to um, a lecture the other day, or it was me, and and, and I think you kind of listened a little bit, but um, Elon Musk was being interviewed, um, and, and he was talking about AI, artificial intelligence, right? I didn't like that interview. I so it, he was he was talking about the, um, the, 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 the idea or the fact that artificial intelligence is way more dangerous to, to mankind, to the world than is. all of the, all of the nuclear weapons in one stockpile. It is. And he's right. It's, it's going to take away so many jobs. How, how is this? So, um, in the next 30 years, 30 years, so I'm 44, I'll be seven. You know, hopefully I'll be still alive and kicking, but, um, in the next 30 years, the, 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 um, the, the future, uh, will be fully autonomous driving cars. And people are like, well, that sounds cool. You know, I can just drink my coffee and watch sports and go to work. However, if there's fully autonomous cars, he mentioned that 10% of the world's population, not just the U.S. population, the world's population, had an automobile as part of their driving effort. In other words, the reason why they're employed is because they drive the car, truck drivers, whatever. So first thing to just to make it really simple was if you lost 10% of the global workforce, oh my gosh, th there would be absolute um, hunger games going on. People would have no work. The the homeless areas in Southern California, by the way, which I grew up, if you go there, it's just, it's, it's crazy. And you have no idea it exists. You know, the war in Ukraine is existing, but you have no idea about the war on the uh, homeless avenues of Southern California. That I can assure you. Um, so the, 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 the AI issue goes beyond that. Um, let's look at farmers. Let's look at people that work in the field. Let's look at anything as long as they're wirelessly hooked up or is there some type of transmitter, then a, a computer can have things, harvest crops, have them pick apples off trees, whatever. And you're going to lose another 20% of the workforce, right? How in the hell does this wrap into tennis, by the way? Uh, we'll leave we'll leave that out of it. But how does this wrap into tennis, right? As far as the intelligence, if well, you, you're seeing that already. You, well, you see it in terms of line calls and blah blah blah. Yeah, you and, don't and, need and, a yeah. person saying that. You don't need a lines judge anymore because you have them. You know the systems that do that for you. Um, pretty soon, you won't need an umpire. Even deeper than that, they can though. Never either. You definitely won't need an umpire. A ball boy, ball girl. You just have the things that suck it up. Mm -hmm. Even deeper than that, though, mm -hmm. if if we don't have the people in place, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. you're going to have no fans there, hence ticket sales. 
Um, and, and, and a lot deeper than that, right? Mm -hmm. The the moral of the story is how important is hard work. You you cannot tell me with these diminishing future kind of prophecies about losing 30% of your workforce based upon AI. You can't tell me that the competition between those 30% doesn't make all of our abilities to go into college, um, to do anything in life, to apply for that job much more difficult. So if I lost 30% of my workforce, right? Uh, globally. And then there was a job that normally 10 people apply for. Now there's a job of 20,000 people applying for the same job. Yeah, it's gonna Stems be back to hard work. Um, how? What are some ways we can work hard um, and keep up with those that are working uh, even harder? Study, study, always study, right? Doesn't yeah. matter your age, study, keep learning. Yeah. Which is why I was telling you when you were telling me about these athletes that they become, um, uh, you know, whatever, rich, blah, blah, blah. But I told you that's a lightning strike. Remember what I was telling you about that? Athletes, yeah. and I always told, told you they should study. They, they shouldn't worry too much about being a pro. That's a lightning strike. Making money. Studying is the number one thing. Be, being successful. Studying, studying for something like, yeah. uh, you know, medical field. You're going to always need that computers. You're going to need to help those computers out, you know? That's yeah. a big field. Space is another one that's becoming really big. The odd thing is, is in that same lecture we were listening to, Elon Musk said that once um, they teach a certain um, system how to learn, they they learn ten like ten to the exponent of twenty three no times quicker than human beings. I'm surprised no one's assassinated this guy. Well, there's he's not the only smart person in the world. He just has the platform. <laughs> so what what are, what are some other way what are some other ways that we can work hard that don't necessarily involve physical um, endurance? Um, being kind to people. Sometimes it's really damn tough to be kind to people, right? Mm -hmm. um, we, we've had people um, in our lives try to tell us exactly what to do, and uh, uh, and and maybe they have they've never picked up a tennis racket, but yet they want to tell us. Um, the best way to hit a backhand or something, you know, sometimes after a long day, you're just like, Oh my God, just shut up. But, but you have to realize you have to be kind. And, and, you know, and sometimes being kind, you finally realize there's someone behind that. That's actually a pretty darn cool person. Right. Yeah. So being kind is important. Lend a helping hand. You know, that, look, I walk into grocery stores all the time and there's no shopping carts. There's none, no shopping carts. I'm like, dang, where's the shopping cart? Look out in the lot and they're scattered throughout the lot. They're not in the designated cart thing. They're just scattered throughout the lot, which tells you that the scattered ones throughout the lot were from lazy freaking bozos. Um, put the damn grocery cart back. Lend a helping hand, right? Yeah. Do anything. If, if you know, and I and I see too. You see, um, um, uh, older people or senior people. Sometimes I feel senior now, uh, but you know they're walking into a store, you know, and then they're they have a walker, literally. Literally have a damn walker and someone bypasses them, opens the door, walks on in with their cell phone in their hand and just lets the damn door slam on them. I get lost. The other one I can't stand is when someone uses those, uh, those cart, those Oh rollers, yeah. And they man. don't need it. You and they know, don't even need you it. You know, they don't need it. Yeah. We were at, just being very lazy. Yeah. We have you ever seen this? We were at Walmart just yesterday, just yesterday. And, and if you, and man, there's, you, the, there's like you're a morbidly new, obese. How I would get rid of that is um, actually don't, walking in the grocery that, yeah, store. Yeah, you're not allowed to. You need to walk. That's your exercise yeah, today. That's a you want to get the idea. food? You gotta walk. Let's go. That's you a, want the food? Gotta walk. Love it. That that would be my solution for that. You should. Here should be the not allowed. Handicap? No, we're not gonna give you handicap. You need to walk extra. Yes. That'll help you in the long yes. run. Yes. No card that, for you. That's that's a solution there. That's a good idea. And as far as uh, Michael Walker's thing, Carlos. Alcaraz will eventually beat Djokovic and Nadal. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Anybody can beat anybody. It's just a matter of time. They are getting older too, Michael Walker. Let's be real. Here. My, These Mike, guys are older. Mike Walker, how tall is Carlos Alcaraz? What's his height? Not like that five ten. He's he's relatively short, so I, I think I think his height will yeah, park far it, away. That's what I do, Blakely. I know I gotta lose a couple. Of, I will, you know, I will, and my toe. I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> but think about it. it. They should they should have some type of um, way to at least give it to the old the, the old the old timers should be on those things. You know, yeah. I get it. If you to broke, risk of a fall. I get if you broke a foot, if like you, you know, when you, you fell you the tender or something. Yeah. I get that. But there's some people that come in sandals, socks and pajamas and they sit on that. And I have a big issue with that. Real big issue. Explain. See that I have a broken toe, right? 
And I told him, I said, I feel like I'm a lazy dumbass nice. walking in with sandals and socks because it looks like you're just freaking lazy, 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 lazy. And so, and I see this on the cart. In the PJs. In the PJs. And to me that I'm like, no, if I could, yeah. if I could get a job, I'll get a job just controlling those carts and be like, you can't get a lazy ass. Mofo, go walk. <laughs> yeah, and, the, and and look, and, and, and Carla's not being um, not being outlandish about what she's saying. You know, as tennis coaches, by the way, you know one of the highest turnover rates in, in all of um, all of business is not just tennis coaching, but coaching in general, right? If you don't win, you're done. You know, you're only as good as your last champion, that type of thing. So um, believe me, sandals you, are you, good, you, but when you, you're coming in like with socks and pajamas, you know, tennis players wear sandals. They do. After they play a match. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you see this lazy ass look with pajamas. Like yesterday, I saw this brother with his pants belt down here, boxer sticking out, which means his thing is sticking out. I mean, it was, I mean, come on. He got his pants on the ground. Pants come on the ground. Come on. Looking like you a go to Walmart, you see people in pajamas. Let's go. Parts. I don't, I don't understand though. What, what there's, there's physics involved with the pants on the ground. So what we, we were washing our car. We were Mississippi. Let's go Mississippi. We were in Mississippi. Um, the Walmart's better there. And we were washing the car and vacuuming it out. And homeboy had his pants. The belt was around like the middle of his uh, quad. So not to the knee, but in between below the actual crease of your ass uh, and in between the quad. So like, here's the, here's the ass. Here's like the legs and it was here. My question is, is how does that belt stay on? I don't how, how look, if I was walking my narrow ass and was walking like that, they'd be around my ankles. So I, my, my, th my, my question is, is how in the damn hell do you get the belt to hold it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Someone should patent a specific belt. Someone should patent a belt and call it pants on the ground reflector or something. And make a belt that's like elastic and fits right to the contour of your quads. And no matter how low you wear your pants, they don't hit the ground. Yeah. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Someone patent that. Even though I hate to look, but you could probably patent it. Mm -hmm. Hustle, hustle. Got to hustle some way. Yeah. Don't care what it is. Give me that hustle. All right. Um, shifting forward to Ashley Barty for a moment. Okay. So for the past, you know, couple of weeks or whatever, since Ashley Barty has stepped away from the game, we have talked about, you know, I wonder why she, you know, what was the thing? Was it family? Was it she wanted to have children? Uh, was it she was just burned out? Why, why did she retire? And lo and behold, I came across an article today. And let me make sure I give credit to um, the uh, author here. And, and the credit goes super to glue. <laughs> super glue. <laughs> super glue? Put that super glue on ass? Yeah. OK. Uh, OK. But that would be kind of painful to get it off, though. OK. So the, the, the shout out for the author to this article comes from. Uh, or goes to Courtney Wynn, N-G-U-Y-E-N. -E I think it's Wynn. I've, I've had a lot of friends over the years with the last name, and it was usually pronounced Wynn, an Asian last name. Um, and the article is Inside Ashley Barty's Decision to Retire. Okay, so you can see that. Okay. Anyway, we love our, we, we, usually people have this like snapping up at you. We're like, duh, we don't want to do that. So we'll just do it the, the manual way. So we talked about it, right? And we talked about your references, Justin. Very important in journalism. You got to do it, bro. You got to do that. Let's go, Gene Swart. I love you, man. I love you. I hope you're ready to keep score for the French Open. And by the way, don't forget, for Roland Garros, we will be giving away $500 in cash to anyone that can predict the men's finals, the women's finals, and both winners. You know, you'll see Nadal Djokovic. That'll be the men's. And we definitely, definitely, definitely will be doing the fantasy teams, which Gene Swart uh, and Thomas Cheek, Canada and South Africa, respectively, do such a great work, uh, do such a great job, and I will be And then magically we'll have so many different opponents that they know that play in that game. And look, <laughs> I, I, yeah, you know what's crazy? I think we have to move. I think we have to move. Like we have to move our whole family during that time. They'll know, like you know, you know, Tom Thomas Chiel. Yeah. Like, oh, I know that person. Yeah. That's my friend. That's who my won. man. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, magically, there'll be like six people they know. Well, Thomas Chi and Jean Swart get paid anyway because we pay them. But to that's, do it. that's funny to me. Oh, I know her. She says, "Send me her money." Oh. 
<laughs> okay. Job, guys. So a- Ashley, Ashley Barty mm-hmm. um, has basically alluded to that. It was her childhood dream to win Wimbledon. And once she did that, it was just kind of like, uh, what else is there? So this is her quote. I wanted to win Wimbledon. That was always the dream. Sometimes your dream- dreams don't come true, but sometimes they do. So, so she retired because she won Wimbledon. I mean, she felt satisfaction. It doesn't matter why she retired. That's her choice. Personally, I, I would rather have a career like Serena and win that many slams, you know? like Yeah. So I, I don't think I could retire knowing that I'm number one and retire with just three slams you have. She won Wimbledon and the three. French. That's no, did she have two? Three. She won the U.S.? She won Australian. She won the U.S. Open. And she won Wimbledon. Oh, I, I, that shows you. Or no, she won French. I, I I'm French sorry, not, just no, two, not right? U.S. Open. She won French. She won Wimbledon. And she Australia, won Australia. Yes. That to me would not be satisfaction. As a tennis, The career slam. you got to get the career slam. To me, to be a tennis player, I worked my whole life for that. I think I would not be satisfied with that. No. Or I wouldn't be satisfied. If I won three, I can win more. No, no. I want to make my name I'm forever pop question. up. Can you put a poll question? Because you could type really efficiently. Can you put a poll question? Um, if if you were Barty, if you were Barty, would you at least want to go? Or would you go for the, the career slam? In other words, all she has to do is win the U.S. And she has what very few people on the earth have, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think, but okay. But anyway, let me, that, that's me being selfish. That's what I would like to see at minimum, but let's, let's, let's read what she would like to see. Right. Mm-hmm. So here's a quote from the article. And by the way, um, the young lady that wrote this, let me go back to her name, Courtney, Wynn. she is a WTA women's tennis association insider. So let's kick off. Um, let's kick off with her quote. It's her article. Um, and thank you for this article, by the way, because it answered some questions for me. All right. Quote from Ashley Barty. When you work for 20 years towards something and you finally achieve that, I was thinking, what else is there? Barty said, what more could this sport offer me? What more could I gain from playing the sport? Okay. And I'm still, now I'm just continuing to read. Barty went through the motions as best she could to finish last season. She would win her fifth and final title of the season at the WTA 1000 in Cincinnati, but the struggle was real. Quote back to Barty. Once we got to the Olympics, it hit home for me that there wasn't much left in her. Barty's coach, Craig Tizer said, the motivation wasn't there except when she played doubles with Storm Sanders and mixed with John Pierre's. Her singles really went by the wayside. I felt like she climbed to where she needed to get And it was going to be a hard slog to keep her involved. So I sort of felt it was coming. Even after her first Grand Slam at the French Open, I had actually prepared this speech about how profound this was going to be and what it meant for her. And her first words to and her first words to me after her victory was, can I retire now? Yeah, to me, it's again, she um, she she was satisfied with that and. She wasn't raised like Serena or Venus where they came probably from really nothing and their dad always told them to be hungry, you know, or maybe like a graph who wanted that. I mean, there's different type of champions. You have those type of champions that they're good with one or two and, and they're done. Kleister's retired pretty young as well. And she was done and she came back because she wanted more and she got one another one and then she was done and she tried to come back, but she couldn't. Can we? Can, she was burned out. I said that okay, way but, before. But, but, I said that my, way but, before. But Michael Walker, I'm curious about this. So Mike Walker, what's up, my brother? He, he says, Barty is poor compared to Osaka. Osaka has so the Osaka endorsements. has really rich parents? She has the endorsements, Justin. Osaka has the endorsements that Barty never got. Okay, well, that's a great question, but why? Why is, though? Why? Because of because of the multi the way she looks. Barty doesn't have a look that you say, "Oh, that's what I want to look like." Okay, okay let, let me don't interrupt me on this one, and 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 let me tell you why. Um, I need to explain something from a coaching perspective, and I know you will agree with me. And you, this wasn't written; this is right off the top. And sometimes I can get in trouble for doing that, but uh, in the United States, especially. Um, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll speak about myself personally. I have been, um, involved with a lot of country clubs, was raised in them, uh, been coached in them, um, uh, have played in them and, and coach in them to this very day. Okay. Um, since roughly the 19 late eighties, early nineties, it is really hard for a Caucasian or white American coach 
to ever hold a position over an international or foreign looking coach, even if that foreign or international coach is not really a good coach. Um, do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes people will gravitate towards a coach. If they talk like this, if they look a little bit different, they look like Patrick Mortagalu and all of the attributes really aren't on board except for the visual. Do you agree with me or disagree? And why? If you disagree, why? Oh, if you agree, why? I agree. I have why? An, I have an advantage over you. She does. <laughs> she does. Now let me. Now, now let me. I'll, I'll expand on this. I do. One. Why? I'm a woman too. I'm Spanish. And you have three. I look different. And you have Four, strong body. My axis different. Five. My body looks like you're eight. in shape. Yes. You're okay. fair enough. You're in shape. So yes, I have. Yes, all, all, all that said, of though. Of course, of all, course. Yes. All that said, I saw the reason why I married you because I knew that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so uh, she wasn't even coaching then. Um, so anyway, so I mean, I've been approached by people like I don't even know them. Like, oh, why don't you come tell her? Like, yeah, huh? um, I don't even know how I coach. The the reason, in my personal opinion, is that American tennis has been watered down for so long, especially at the junior level, um, where. Parents especially don't even trust anybody that's a gringo running a tournament. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to point fingers. Um, there's been a lot of personal experiences we've had where we've been thrown in, in the midst of um, uh, uh, matches in the first round that shouldn't have taken place to the final. I'm not going to get, and I'm not going there. Um, but there is a big, 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 big difference, especially at the junior level of having the look of an international coach one that's not which is why and, and, and why and why is that again it goes right to the 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 osaka next segment right again she is more she's a lot more marketable oh don't watch that i, I got it she's a lot more marketable and that's a fact barty is not you look at barty she's a normal looking girl okay yeah she's got muscles. Okay. but you look at osaka she's international she's a she's mixed which is a plus it's a plus look at football guys the mixed guys do really well. They get those endorsements. It's factual. Osaka, you know, she's she's dizzy. She, people want to know why she's that way. Barty is pretty much a straight shooter. There's nothing really interesting. So does that mean life. does that mean our children are going to be more successful because they're mixed? I think little guy will be. Okay, just because he's got two mixed parents, he's going to be a beast. No, that's because you know that's what you're alluding to, though. What I'm saying is, if if he is a beast. If it's he because he was mixed. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, no, that's not what I'm saying. But that's that's what... you got two people, right? You got two people. Here's Barty. Here's Osaka. Well, bad, bad. <laughs> who's, a, who's a better player? Here's Barty. Here's Osaka. Oh, right? No, we went blue and white. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. alien and Barty and Osaka. <laughs> Man, she's she's getting out there, bro. She's Barty getting out Osaka. there. Barty is well behaved, classical player, very nice. It doesn't, doesn't sell. really have issues. Yeah. Doesn't sell. Here's Osaka, mentally messed up, confused, multi-racial parents, born in Japan, came to New York. What's more interesting to you guys? Like, um, like, I don't know. <laughs> or someone that's just a straight shooter. The one that's dumb is more interesting. Wow. That's why we watch... Reality shows. So long story short, who are you going to watch? PB, you put PBS and you put a reality show, more people watch the reality show. That's a good Just point. Just saying. It's a great point. Yeah. Mr. Rogers or Helter Skelter. Go figure it out. Okay, by Did the she way. she retire young because she, she again, she, I think she was burned out from tennis. Can, can yeah. you get burned out from tennis? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think Serena, and the, that's why those guys are special. They're still hungry. They still want more. They still want more. They want their names to be there. She didn't care for that, and that's okay. It's all right. Hennen could have done the same, but she didn't. Yeah, and and Hennen, Hennen, Hennen to me was more hard to, I guess, swallow when she retired um, very early on. And I think with Hennen, there was a lot of discussion about performance enhancing drugs, stuff like that. Anyway, um, but and, I, and the Raducano thing. The only reason she's got the endorsements again isn't looks. she mixed? Isn't she mixed as well? Well, there you go. Did you just stumble on with something here? Just saying, guys. Why do you guys like Alcaraz? Thank you. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let's go. Say factual stuff. Let's go. Let me see. Alcaraz or Brooksby? Hmm. 
This is the guy from Austin Powers. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Carla brought up an interesting article to me earlier. It wasn't an article. Who's Phil the Thrill? Did you change your name? Let's go Phil the Thrill. It's I, not I, Philip, right? Either way, when I see new names, I always like to give them shout Anna outs. Anna Kornikova was the highest pay because she was hot. Okay, let's read his That's comment. Fine. We she got was different. We, we, we got to get Russian. it. Phil the Thrill. Anna Kornikova was one of the highest paid tennis players, and she didn't win anything. We talked about this before. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But why did she not? Why, Carl? Let me ask you a question. Why did Anna Kornikova never sell me? You don't like blondies. I don't like blondies. Yeah. Damn. But either way, but yes, I mean, you, 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 you know, she sold a lot because of the way she looked, and I'm not taking that away from. Yes, well, not she was only beautiful. That, she, yes, she was ripped. When but, she came out on the tour, they, I mean, we had Sabatini. Yeah, we had, but no one had seen someone like Cornicola before, and she was the first young girl. Balotelli was, you know, yeah. Balotelli was not a great coach. She just knew how to talk. By the well, way, he knew how to talk. T- well. Time out there. She just mentioned um, Nick Bolletary wasn't necessarily the best player, right? No, he wasn't a good coach. Either. Now, he just knew how to talk. Does, does Bill Belichick that coaches the New England Patriots was he a good football player? Does uh, how many how many of the most successful coaches on the planet actually never really played the sport that they coach very well? A lot of them. A matter of fact, the, the overwhelming majority of the super successful coaches. Maybe played the game. Some of them didn't at all. Uh, what about Sean McVay that coaches um, the, uh, the the Rams? I, I, I mean, he played the game, but he wasn't super successful and, and just won the Super Bowl. Bill Belichick. You know, anyway, so a lot of times I really feel, and I know we both feel that way, a lot of times the best coaches have a lot of time to think when they lose. And sometimes coaches, when they lose a lot, are always trying to find themselves as the player that won a lot doesn't really focus on studying the game because it's just too easy for them. So, and coaching being the best player is irrelevant. Would you agree or disagree? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Carla brought up an article to, uh, uh, or a bunch of articles to me earlier about a bunch of players withdrawing. In other words, walkovers, not playing withdrawing from the Miami open. And uh, what Carla, I think you were telling me was, Certain players that had been vaccinated versus players well, that well, had this, not. This was at the Liberty Daily. Okay, this is a conservative that, alternative to the Drudge Report. So they said, "This is I'm reading their article." It said, "Tennis fans are upset, and the sporting world is reeling after an unprecedented number of players either withdrew or retired from the Miami Open this week. A total of 15 players." were unable to finish, including the male and female favorites to win. Um, and then they name all the players and they say, uh, nobody, they're saying nobody is pointing to the obvious. All of the players must be fully vaccinated in order to compete. Just as we noted for several months, most major sports have been hit with inexplicable medical conditions popping up in young and otherwise healthy athletes including our rep- our report that three cycli- cyclists fell in March alone. Folks, this is a jab. There is no other viable possibility, especially when we consider how even the CDC and other agencies have acknowledged that COVID vaccines cause increase in heart problem for young people. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I thought this article was interesting. I have noticed that a lot of people have complained. It's be- people I teach. Um, people around the high school sports, um, there have been just tremendous amount of withdrawals. You know, like they don't. Oh, your bike's about to fall and break. Oh no, it's not good. Okay. Well, hopefully, if it can go off mountains. What's should, up, Brian Mason? It should be able to. But I, I thought it was an interesting article. That's true. That would there. There have been a lot of players, and I hear people saying, "I get sick, and I don't know why. I can't breathe, and I don't know why." And just interesting. So it, it 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 sounds like there might be some side effects or something. I don't With know. the hearts, I don't know. I don't know. All right, Sub Zero is just coming to give you an update. So he he is now nineteen weeks. He's nineteen weeks. So he looks like a bad mofo. He will be. He'll be twenty weeks. No, that's not a pit bull. It's an American bully. It's an American. He will mess you up. Just kidding. It's an American bully. He's an American bully. He's a cutie. Yeah, he's a good boy. He's Sub- like I'm a big boy. Sub Zero, what do you think? He's like, oh, I'll mess you up, guys. Yeah. See, why you find me interesting? Oh. Uh, why I, do you guys find me interesting? I got that because I'm multi. <laughs> I'm mixed. <laughs> huh. And there it is, too, with the dog. Yeah. See? There's my point. 
Why? But he's not mixed. He's I got papers on him. Yeah, but his mom is different and his dad's different. He's mixed. I got oh yes. So yeah. He, so his his that makes him interesting. His mom was blue. Or it's like a silver look, but they call him blue. So his mom was blue and a beast. Like, oh, get your swole on. And then the dad was a tricolor. His dad was black and then had tri spots of uh, fawn. That's what they call it in white. So his dad was like 90 pounds. And then the mom was like 65, 70. And this, he's on, he's on point to even get bigger than both, man. Look at this dude. He's like, what? I'm only 19 weeks and I'm all up in your face. Come on. Let's go. Look at this guy. He's like, stop it, daddy. Stop yeah. It. All right, guys. Thank you so much. As always, we will see you uh, next Monday or any rainy day that pops up between then and there. Monday is our off day that we give ourselves, which isn't really much of one. No, that's why I was happy to rain today. And we would rather be teaching anyway. Um, yeah. I, and we'll I, be celebrating Lily's birthday. Oh, yes. On Sunday. For at those the of club, you guys at the club, the, for at those the of club. you out there at the club, it's my daughter's birthday. Yes. Um, Natasha Gabe's mom is going to put an event out there for those that are interested in going. Yes. So Mirror Lake Racket Club next Sunday for Lily's birthday. And um, we have a tournament coming up on April 6th, 7th, and 8th. The you mean May? May, May, May. May 6th, 7th, and 8th. And it's the Mother's Day and Cinco de Mayo Classic Men's and Women's Doubles. Uh, men's doubles between the levels of 7.0 and 8.5 combined or combined combo and women's doubles between 6.0 and 7.0. We're going to do food truck on Friday night, play a match. Uh, we're going to do karaoke on Saturday night. Uh, and then finals uh, are semifinals and finals on Sunday. Uh, so it should be a great time. Kids, what's up? Let's go. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a great few spots available by the way. So make sure if you actually want to compete, we get that done. All right. All right. See you sub zero. Let's go. All right. Until next time. Adios.